not a whole lot's been going on in the garage this week. Um, kind of been in the funk. You know, we all get in those those uh, moods where we just don't really want to work on anything. So I don't have a whole lot of content, but I figured some content's better than no content. So this is just kind of a little bit of an update video. Kind of show you a little bit of things that I've been doing off camera, but man, it just seems like every time I go to work on this truck, it's just, it's fighting me. Everything you try and do, it just either creates another problem or you can't find the parts that you need or I don't know, but it just seems like every time I go to do something on this truck lately, it's fighting me. Like for instance, I needed a power steering hose made and I had it all uh, uh, mocked up. Like I'd made a mock-up hose and was gonna take it over to uh, Parker Hose Store, which is like a local hose and fitting store here. It's where I get most of my AN fittings um, and all my hoses made, hydraulic hoses, stuff like that. But the one closest to me said that it was closed, but there's one in Phoenix, which is about 30 miles from my house, said they were open. And that's actually the store that I prefer to go to. It's closest to my work. Me and my girlfriend loaded up in the car, drove over there, and lo and behold, we get there and they are closed also. Apparently they are no longer open on Saturdays because of the whole pandemic and everything. I didn't know that. Said that they were open online, but I guess you just can't believe everything that you read online. So that was like the first big real kick in the nuts. Uh, so I didn't really do get a whole lot done that weekend. Um, but I was able to get a power steering line done later. So power steering lines are done and on. Um, I was able to get the belt on. That's pretty much all that's left to kind of make it like fully runnable before I had just started it and only let it run for a little while because there was no belt for no, uh, uh, water circulation for the water pump. So the only thing kind of left under here that I need to do is I need to finish up the wastegate to uh, actually come out the fender here. Um, it's just kind of tacked and mocked up sitting there. Probably going to build or make some sort of thing to brace it to this one and then I'll wrap them up. I also got this here weather pack connector kit because I want to go and fix all the wiring like I had just done some whoa anyways I don't know what that lens was doing but it was not happy but I just uh, I've got some like spay terminals here on the on the fan wiring and then I need to go I need to wire up the line lock put a connector on it put a connector on my fuel pump and and there's something else I think I'm forgetting but yeah I got this to do that so that I can put nice weatherproof connectors on those and then I still need to uh, wire up this kind of ignition switch panel and mount it somewhere and then I also spent a couple of nights out here trying to bleed the brakes get the brakes working so what I'm using here is just a stock manual master cylinder off of like an 86 S10. Um, I just thought that, you know, if I'm using manual brakes, that a manual stock master cylinder should work pretty well, but it doesn't. Um, from previous videos you guys seen, I put big brake kit on the front that basically uses like a 2008 newer uh, half ton Chevy caliper. So it's a lot bigger caliper than the factory would have had. And then I've also got the disc, which is just like a GM metric caliper in the rear. And this master cylinder is a step bore and it's designed for disc and drum. So it may work, but after bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and more bleeding and bench bleeding and more bleeding and bench bleeding again and more bleeding, the pedal feel is just not what I want. It, uh, I can tell that there's like a lot of pressure and when driving it, it may be completely different, but I can push the pedal all the way to the floor. Like I can feel resistance, like there's brake pressure, but 
I can push the brake pedal all the way to the floor. And I just, I don't like that feel. It may stop just fine, but I don't really like the feeling of that brake pedal. So I may have to step up or change the master cylinder bore to accommodate the brakes. I'll have to figure out, you know, my caliper um, piston area, you know, and brake lever or brake pedal uh, ratio, which when I did the, the manual master cylinder, I did move. Let me see if I can get under here. You can't really see, but this uh, brake pedal actually had a spot for power brake and then up above it for uh, manual brakes because the manual brakes need more leverage. So moving that uh, push rod up on the pedal creates a, a higher ratio on the pedal to make it easier to apply the brakes manually. But doing all of that, it's just not what I want it to be. So that was another thing that was kind of kind of deflating you know, spend all that time bleeding the brakes and can't get it to, way, to the way that I want it. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, the truck is basically ready to try and test drive. Um, brakes, semi-functional, um, got a belt on it, so we should have alternator, should have a water pump, be able to test the cooling system, uh, you know, make sure it doesn't overheat, get some heat, get some heat into it, do a heat cycle. Um, maybe take this thing down the street here pretty soon. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, that's one thing I have to look forward to. But man, I just, I'm telling you, every time I work on this truck lately, it's just one thing after another fighting me. I don't know if I ever showed this, but got the uh, master kill switch here, all wired up. The wire actually runs all the way from the alternator back here, so it's, you know, NHRA legal. Um, should, I haven't tested it, should kill the engine when that's off. Um, battery's all mounted up. I need to go through and finalize and make sure everything's tight. Feels tight, but I gotta go through and double check all that. Fuel system, I believe you guys have seen that. With the fuel pump under here. It's a it's a Holly pump. I don't remember the the part number off the top of my head right now, but it's way more fuel pump than I need. It's a dual pump. It's got two pumps in one. Uh, I only plan on running the one pump right now as needed. Um, second pump is just there for a backup or in case I really turn this thing up and need the extra fuel it's already there but yeah I mean not a whole lot left to do on this thing um, get it running well it's already running you guys probably noticed that in some of the older videos there was a cage mocked up in here and it's no longer here um, I still have the the main hoop in here because I might build off of it, but the reason I took it out is because I just didn't like it. It didn't fit very well. Gosh, I can't remember the name of the company of the cage now. But anyways, it, it's a, God, what is it called? It's, it's a company owned by Moroso. I got a sticker right here on my firewall, hold on. Competition Engineering. It was a competition engineering cage that I had bought from Summit Racing. Um, it was supposed to be four S10s and like bent to fit, and but it and it said that some of the bars weren't going to be notched and everything due to variances of of different cabs and everything. But I just didn't like the way it fit. It was like the bars came here and then they dove real early, so there was like a lot of gap right here and it was really hard for me to get in and out of with it i mean i'm a big dude i'm 6'2 you know 200 and we'll say 260 pounds but with this kirky seat it was hard for me to get in and out hitting my head on the this top bar um 
it could have been me <laughs> installing it, but I just I just didn't like the way it fit. Um, so I took it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and find something a little bit better. I may just custom build one, bend the tube myself, and put it in. So if any of you guys that are, have done these S10s and have a, a cage that you guys recommend, definitely uh, put it in the comments and let me know what <clears throat> where to find it. Hopefully find something that works. I think that's about it. But as far as the garage goes, um, I got some pegboard, painted it, put it up right here. So that can uh, make it a little bit easier to put like hang the tools that I use most often. Um, as you guys can see, I did bring home my soldering iron and some solder so that I can finally take care of the uh, hanging wires for my lights, which a lot of you guys have commented on. Um, I do plan on taking care of that, shortening them up, soldering them. Just haven't really got around to it. Got my neon sign hung up there. Got to get an extension cord so I can actually plug it in and turn it on. Um, got this little bolt bin. I had this in my old garage. Um, and this bolt bin selection replaced it. So now this is just for miscellaneous, you know, self tapper screws, brake line fittings, stuff like that, along with some, uh, some overflow from this one. Benches, still haven't decided if I want them black or gray. This one's gray and that one's still not painted. But I think I'm gonna go with gray, or uh, black. Um, I think I'm gonna do black. It's just too much gray. It's like 50 shades of gray in here. But yeah, like I said, it's kind of a boring video, just me talking, giving you guys an update, but I figured it's better than nothing. Uh, I wanna keep you guys up to date keep you guys in the loop, let you guys know what's going on. But just gonna try and uh, get out here a little bit more this week. I mean, it sound like a broken record, but I do live in Arizona and it does get hot. This week it's supposed to be like 109, 110 all week long. So it makes it real hard to get out here in the garage. So until I get that AC unit or something to do in here, to combat the heat, I don't know. It, it, I have to find something, something to do. But till then, I'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.